you were in Tangerine, yep. which was the summer breakout hit. Mm-hmm. Um, how was it being a part of that indie film? Oh, it, I mean, it was it was great. You know, um, uh, Sean and I work really uh, now. We work really closely together, and I had been in um, Starlet, his uh, previous effort, yeah. and so. You know, Sean is a very loyal, sort of inclusive filmmaker, and once he starts to work with people, he likes to work with them over and over again. And and we just developed a rapport. We live really close to each other. And uh, so he called me uh, a couple years ago and said, uh, You know, I'm working on this uh, movie about sex work in front of the Donut Time. And and I know specifically about that area because I live pretty close to it. Yeah. And I said, Cool, like, when, when do you want me to be there? And I just showed up and I did it. You know, like, I didn't. I didn't really think about it. Like, I, we all won a bunch of awards for working on Starlet, so why would I? You know what not, I mean? Yeah, not be a like, part of it. Like, dude won me an award. Let's go make another movie <laughs> together. Make another one. And this was phenomenal. Small world, people we were kind of talking before, yeah. that the youth that are in Tangerine, I actually worked with. Um, Kiki Amaya. Kiki Amaya at the LA Gay and Lesbian Center in our youth program. And so it's... A lot of people look at that and are thinking, oh, this can't be that real. But we're on it, that corner where Donut Time is, there's is. a lot of sex workers. It is. It's very real. Yeah. It's a very, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting to have been, you know what I mean? It, it's interesting. There hasn't been much backlash about it, but it, it's interesting to hear that, like, oh, we don't want to see uh, this uh, as uh uh, we don't want this to be the represent- representation of trans people in movies and television because it's sort of always been that way. Mm-hmm. It's like, fair enough. Like, I-, I totally get that because, like, you have the breadth of experience. A- everyone has a different experience. Of course. But that still is happening there. On broad daylight, on a corner. 100%. Yes. 100%. Yeah. So that-, that still exists and that vocationally... Like, it, just because you don't want to see something, that's fine. But ask yourself why that's hap- why that's still happening, and, and the causes and the, and conditions that create it are m- much more screwed up than you know the sort of depiction of sex work in the trans community. Yeah, definitely. So, what was it about that playing the role, the gay pimp, and being exposed to that? Did you learn that you didn't learn? from just living in the neighborhood? What I learned was um, that, that um, like, gay, I mean, sorry, excuse me, uh, black and Latina trans sex workers are the fastest growing rate of HIV in this country. Mm-hmm. And it's, become they, it's because they come from uh, households of median incomes of less than $10,000, right? So, but they want to transition, and uh, transitioning is an incredibly expensive process. But because of gender bias in our society, it's incredibly difficult to get a normal job. So they turn to sex work, right? And then because sex work is illegal, they stop using condoms because condoms, if a cop busts you with condoms, they can go, aha, evidence for doing sex work. Exactly. Right? So this is like the tendrils of economics are at play here more than anything else. And until we look at the economic conditions that ripen these situations, like it's, all of this is a moot point, you know? 